Well, recently, a series of revelations on the failings of church leaders have come to light. The news of moral fa failures in the church is, is not a new thing, unfortunately, but this year, I think the shock has and hurt, uh, just hurt a little bit more deeply, and since many of those pastors have huge followings. So that's what we're going to talk to you about today. Uncomfortable <laughs> conversations with <laughs> Ashley. It's a mark of... <laughs> <laughs> our years together. That's we, right. We, she always but you can handle on, it. But you can handle it. That's why know. I asked you the tough question. Sometimes like, oh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I need to call HR so I can <laughs> have someone observe the conversation. No, but we, we got to talk about it. And one of mm. the things that I wanted to ask is, do you think that the celebrity pastor phenomena has caused many of these celebrity pastors to fall? I don't think it's a cause. I, I do think it's a contributing factor. I mean, yeah. there, there's, you know... Fame makes you better looking. Um, money makes you better looking. Power makes you better looking. Um, these things uh, tend to go to go together. So, what is it about that that um, uh, people find attractive and, mm -hmm. and are drawn to? Yeah. Uh, so that same thing can also fool uh, the pastor in thinking, well, I've got it going on, and mm -hmm. you know, it's you know, this 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 is okay for me to do. Yeah. Do you think that? In today's Christian culture, do you think we idolize pastors too much? Um, I think in today's American culture, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about Christian culture or secular culture or sports culture or political mm -hmm. culture, we, we have a lot of different cultures all going off at once. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a problem within American culture. I don't think it's new. Mm, okay. uh, I, I think this is something that has been around a long time. Mm -hmm. We want to invest in people attributes that they do not have mm. and things and affections and things that are, are, are God's alone. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to put into something we can see or mm -hmm. handle or, or, you know, be around. And, yeah. and, and somehow that makes us feel better if we're near someone with celebrity. It's, mm -hmm. it's that sort of celebrity glow. Yeah. Uh, and I've actually seen people take advantage of that, uh, and it, uh, it's, it's disturbing on both sides. Yeah, uh, definitely. But it, it definitely gets you into uh, some really strange behavior patterns, mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to look far in the Bible to see it. I mean, with King Herod being proclaimed, he's a god, and then in that very, very moment, how eloquent he is, and this yeah. is all wonderful. In the very moment he dies, a very horrible death. Wow. Uh, so, you know, God's not mocked, and, and yeah. our affections as Christians mm -hmm. should not be on any earthly vessel, yeah. but for the divine that is being imparted to them. Yeah. Let us recognize what's that source, and let's seek that source. You know, I, th I think of it's certainly not new for certain individuals to have a following. I think of Billy Graham. I think of Charles Spurgeon. You know, he had a huge following in Great Britain, and so... Should we fear? Well, both of them are excellent examples of, of here yeah. are people that have distilled down their years of Bible reading and study and theology. Mm -hmm. Billy Graham famously saying, I will preach what I understand. Yeah. Uh, Spurgeon, probably the most eloquent preacher of any age uh, and certainly the most prolific of any age. Yeah. Uh, and I highly recommend both. They, they really sound theology that's biblically based, yeah. but they took the time to read in the original language. You can tell it. Mm -hmm. You can tell how they uh, have an exposition of scripture. They understand the original meaning yeah. and they bring that out. So it's okay to say, I found something good. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of similar to how Paul says of prophecy, um, judge it, and when you find something good, hold on to it. Yeah. I think that can apply, that same standard can apply to anything. Well, do you think that's maybe one of the reasons why these certain individuals have fallen? Because they aren't taking enough time to get into the Word and to really, you know, cultivate their relationship with the Lord. I mean, what do you think the pitfalls have been for them? I think the... I think throughout Christian history, I've read too much Christian history, St. Augustine <laughs> has, you know, a whole description of what he does with priests who fall into sexual sin. And it's, it reads almost identical to what's happening today where St. Augustine, and this is the beginning of the church and church coming out of persecution, 
and you would think there would be purity there, but you, you examine it, no, they had affairs, mm. uh, they had homosexual priests, they, they had all of this going on in the church. And it's interesting how he would um, uh, prescribe things for that. If he thought it was premeditated, if he thought it was ongoing, continuous, that there wasn't true repentance, then he mm -hmm. would show them the door, I'm sorry, you can't be this anymore. Mm -hmm. If it was a moment of the flesh and they were overcome by a, a temporary temp temptation, he would then walk them through a restoration process. Wow. Uh, so this isn't new. Um, King David, as great as he was, <laughs> yeah. as, as much as he was the heart of God, as yeah. much as the Bible admires, he did everything in his generation. Mm -hmm. There was still this incident with Bathsheba, and what did it take for King David? He was resting from battle. He was up on a rooftop, and he happened to look over the roof, and there's Bathsheba. Mm. And he goes, boy, uh, she looks really good. <laughs> and a whole trail of sin comes from that, a whole trail of degradation for him personally and for um, the Israel, Israelite nation. Uh, but I remind people, we still read his songs. We still sing along to what David wrote. Yeah. He's still inspired, uh, and God restored him. So let us have mercy on those who have fallen. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched, and so you never miss a beat. See you next time, and God bless.